Hey guys, this is the tutorial for how to complete the weightlift constraint assignment, or really just learning how to do constraints. So as we did in class, um, the first thing to do is we want to create three objects. Doesn't really matter what they are, just just create three obje objects. So we go to create up here, polygons, and we're just going to create three different geometric shapes, a sphere, which we got over there, and then we'll create a cube, and maybe a, I don't know, pyramid. And I'll move them around just like so. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little bit of animation uh, for them. So, for example, here, I'll make the cube over there, and the ball will be the thing that they pass around. So the cube, I'm just going to select, hit a hit set key, and then I'm just going to do some animation of the cube, just kind of rotating like so. Now we can see it's moving around. Cool. And then same thing for the uh, pyramid. I'm going to have it just start a little bit later. But I'll have it, you know, do something. It doesn't have to be amazing. It just has to <clears throat> show us that it's moving around. Like so. And that works. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do when we want to uh, constrain something, we want to constrain this ball right here to the cube. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, select the two objects in the correct order. So the correct order for setting up constraints or telling Maya what you want constrained to what is you want to select the parent or master first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Select our cube and then shift select the ball, which will be the child. And then if you go up to the um, the animation menu set, which is right here, you can go to constrain and parent right here. Now once we do that, as you can see, if we select the ball, the, at, the translate and rotate attributes of the ball have all turned this light blue color. And that instructs us that <clears throat> the, uh, these attributes are now constrained, i.e. I can't move them around. If I decide to uh, translate this around, the second I move the time slider, it'll jump right back. These are, these are, are, are listening to the cube only right now. So, and to test it out, we can move the time slide around, and as we see, it's completely listening to the cube, which is great. Now, what we want, uh, what we want to have happen in this assignment is essentially we want the ball to uh, listen to the cube, be constrained to the cube, for uh, let's just say, you know. Um, you know, 50 frames or so. Uh, let's see if I rotate this around like that. So it leaves it off there at frame 35. We want at frame 35, uh, roughly, it doesn't really matter, but somewhere in the middle of, of cube moving, say after about 30 frames, we want this cube to no longer listen to the cube. So in order to do that, we need to set a keyframe on the cube, both at the start and at where we want it to, to not move around anymore. And we notice that it's absolutely not listening to the cube. And the reason for that is once you set a key on something that's constrained, the blue constraint attributes now turn green, as you can see here, and then the rest of the attributes are red, which, as we know, um, when attributes are red, there that just tells you that there's keyframe information there. Um, these these attributes here being green just means that there's a constraint, which we knew was blue, 
And there's now keyframe as well, which is red. Why it's green, I don't know. Um, it would probably make more sense if it was purple, since um, it's a combination of red and blue. But Maya decided to make them green. Regardless, we know that there's there's uh, constraints here and there's keys. What it also did was it created this extra attribute for us called blend parent one. What blend parent one does for us for Sphere is it tells us whether or not Sphere is listening to a constraint or ignoring a constraint completely, where ignoring it is zero and listening to a constraint is one. So if we go ahead and switch blend parent to one, we see that it's, it's absolutely listening to it. Now, one thing that's not totally obvious because of the erratic pattern, animation pattern of the cube is that because I only have two keyframes here, I have a key at frame one and a key at frame 35 at zero, all along this whole 35 frame move, um, the blend parent is slowly drifting and slowly turning off. As you can see here at frame 17, blend parent one is 0.544. You don't really want uh, to blend across a, a large period of time if you can help it. Uh, especially um, in in this example, so we want to what we instead we want is we want to have this blend parent on uh, at one the whole time and then right at the last just before that last frame, we want it to switch to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just set a key here where it's blend parent one and now what we've got is it's completely listening to the cube and then it just stops listening, which is what we want. All right. And then the second part of the assignment is now we want him to start listening to the pyramid. So we're really going to do the same kind of thing. Once we get to the point where we want it to start listening to pyramid, let's say at frame 50, we create a constraint again. And as you remember, to set a constraint, you have to select the master first, shift, or sorry, select it, the master, and then shift select the child. And then just do the same thing. Go to in the animation menu set, go to constrain, parent. Now one thing you, you'll notice, this doesn't change, we still have our blend parent on one or zero, but the thing we have to remember is blend parent, the, this blend parent attribute does not tell the sphere which object to listen to, it just says whether or not it's listening to a constraint at all or completely ignoring it. Where we figure out who the sphere is listening to is with these new attributes that were created down here in the shape section. As you can see here, P cube one weight and P pyramid one weight. And these weights are essentially the amount of influence or how much it's listening to each object, each parent, if you will. So, and as, as you can see here, uh, the same thing where inf one is full 100% influence and zero is none. As you can see here, uh, the sphere is listening to both equally 100%, which actually is mathematically impossible. So we can expect a bunch of erratic behavior. Now, we don't see that because um, it's it's not... Uh, this one, the, the, the pyramid wasn't moving and blend parent uh, one is off right now. But if we if we turn, remember we want frame at frame fifty to start listening to the pyramid, so we grab sphere and we set a key before the frame we want, so frame forty nine. We hit S, and at frame fifty we hit S again, and that's going to be our holding at zero along this whole section from frame thirty five to forty nine. These uh, these keys are going to hold blend parent at zero, and all of a sudden here, it's going to switch this to one. And start listening to the pyramids, what we want. Now, having as as I said, we're seeing some really weird behavior. Getting back to what I was saying before, because down here, uh, the sphere we can see is listening a hundred percent to both of them, which it can't do. It's it's just not sure what you want it to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go back to frame one, select both of these attributes down here, because as again another thing you would notice is when you hit S, you don't add a key to the shape attributes. The only way to add a key to the shape attributes is to select them individually as we're doing right now and then right click key selected. And as you can see now there are keys there. 
And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the pyramid weight to zero. And I'm going to leave the, the cube weight at one. So now when we play it, Sphere is 100% listening, as you can see, to the cube. But once we get to somewhere during this middle section where it's not listening at all to anybody during this blend parent zero section, here's where we, is the uh, opportune time to make a little switch. So we're going to grab our two uh, uh, influence uh, attributes and key select it again and key which is our hold, holding it there so that it'll be listening the, this entire way to cube. And then the next frame, I'm going to key select it again. And now I'm going to switch them. Now, you can't see that, that animation uh, in, the, in the time slider. As you can see, if I minimize my graph editor a little bit, down here, you, the 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 weight attributes down here, they don't show up in the time slider as these neat little red ticks. So it, it's, it's, it's sometimes tricky to keep track of where you had them, but if you open up the graph editor, as you can see, there they are right there. These um, cube weight, one WO, those are, those are generally representing weights. Um, and there are those keys where we keep as you can see at the start, one is one of them is set to one, one is set to zero, going all the way, holding, 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 and then switching. So now, when we go back to our animation, we should see exactly what we intended, as in it's listening to cube. We get to this section where it stops listening to anybody. We make our little switch where the weights go from 100% being on cube to now 100% being on pyramid, which is right about here. See, as you can see, pyramid now is one, that's zero. It switches, and then pyramid takes over. All right. Any questions, uh, feel free to email me as, as usual uh, at jason.par at humber.ca, and we'll see you guys next class.